ended up that there are actually only 32 hashes each day. Okay, the stormworm communication actually works in such a way that once the stormworm searches for those hashes, it um, receives as an answer to the search requests some more information on um, which IP and port it should, con uh, it should contact, and then it just contacts um, the specific controller IP, and then at, in the first step there's a simple challenge and response, so that the host actually has to prove that he's actually um, a valid node, so that he's also infected, um, and then the host uh, contacts mx.google.com in order to test whether it can also send out spam emails. Um, so these are the test results. Then it also um, basically the host, uh, the controller just acknowledges this, so he just sends answers back. Um, the host also searches on the local disk for email addresses. It searches the hard disk for other content. It also um, sends information about the local IP address, uh, the operating system and everything to the controller. And then basically the controller either sends um, the infected node a template in order to spamming. So these are the, the emails that we've seen earlier where the um, storm node just gets a template, so it gets the whole mail body, it gets um, a set of um, recipient addresses, a set of um, yeah, sender addresses, and then just based on this template, it generates in each iteration a new spam mail and then sends it out. Or it can also receive orders to start a distributed denial of service attack in order to attack other systems. And there we see quite frequently attacks, so DDoS attacks against um, some antivirus or more the anti-spam anti companies. And then the b bot basically starts spamming or starts DDoS. Okay, so the authentication step is rather easy. So the controller sends the challenge and the um, storm node sends back a response. If you just XOR this, you will receive a certain value. If you observe a second challenge and then the second response for the storm node, you see that this is, if you XOR both of them again, you see that um, you receive the same result. And also for the third one, so uh, if you XOR the challenge with a response, you always get the same XOR key. So therefore, this is the key that is used to authenticate, so a very simple authentication scheme um, in order to prove that you are actually a legitimate node. The actual uh, communication afterwards, they use zlib, so just um, a zip library to basically um, compress the communication. Um, nothing fancy, so you can just, just a couple of lines in Python to decrypt this. Um, Storm sends yeah, information about the local Windows version and the IP to the controller. It tests the spamming via mxgoogle.com. We had this already in the picture. And then you get this control the spam template and then starts um, spamming. So the actual storm overlay network that is built on top of Overnet is rather easy, so nothing really fancy there. Okay, so what can we now learn more about uh, storm? So basically we have this peer-to-peer -peer network, so each bot communica communicates with a set of peers, um, and now we want to get basically an overview of how many uh, how many peers are there, how many of them are infected with storm, and this is what I'll talk in the, yeah, in the remainder of this talk. Okay, mm, in order to get an overview of how many total peers are there, we've implemented a crawler. Um, the basic idea is that if I'm a member of the peer-to-peer -peer network, I can talk to my peers and ask them, okay, who is your peer? So I could just contact you, and then I'll ask you whether, um, or I ask you to send me your contacts, you send them to me, and then if I do this recursively, I'll basically crawl the whole space since I get more and more contacts. Um, this is the general principle of how you can learn more about P2P systems, just crawl them in an iterative way. Um, so um, Moritz, he had already done some work in this area, he had presented um, a, a crawler for CutC, which is one of the bigger um, P2P networks currently out there. They had a paper this year at IMC. Um, and we adopted this crawler to basically uh, also crawl the whole uh, Overnet network. 
Um, and this crawling is actually rather fast. So on one machine, it takes between 20 and 40 seconds to basically um, get through the whole space. So just asking in an iterative way everyone who knows who, which peers. Okay, so with this crawling, we get a rather good overview of who is currently online, who is a member of the peer-to-peer -peer network. But since um, there are also legitimate um, users within the P2P network, we have to find a way to differentiate between who is legitimate and who is infected. And therefore, we uh, use the so-called civil attack, where the idea is that um, the whole overnet space is 128-bit large. And then if we join the network with many, many, many peers, we, and if we position the, ways, the peers in such, such a way that we are basically near everyone, then we can um, then we are in the routing table of everyone, and if somebody wants to communicate with somebody else, then the chances are very good that uh, this request is routed um, through my computer so that I can then see who is searching for what. Um, so yeah, the basic idea is we have two to the power of 24 sybils, so rather many sybils. Um, we can basically join the network with so many uh, peers because we do not need to keep any state. Um, we just encode within the first 22 bits um, the basically the space within the whole P2P space where we want to be, and then all following bits are fixed. And then if you imagine um, the whole space to be just a just a whole just a large ma matrix, we basically position our peers in such a way that we are basically um, spread across the whole matrix and in such a way that we are basically yeah, evenly spread and near basically everyone else, so that we are in the routing table of all other peers. So many nodes are then near us, and they also use us to basically relay their content. And basically this works rather well. Um, when we do a full crawl, these are numbers based in, on the October results, uh, we observe between 50, uh, 45 and 80,000 um, online peers. Uh, this does not take NUT into account, since uh, for each IP or for each peer that's behind NUT, we just see one IP. If two uh, peers same the, uh, share the same public IP, we do not can or we cannot differentiate this. So this is basically just a rough estimate of how many peers are out there. In total, so within this one month, we saw 420,000. Uh, different overnet IDs on 1.7 million different IP addresses. Um, so these are basically just the, the unique users who were online during October, and uh, due to things like DHCP or if you have to redial in every 24 hours, the chances are good that you get a different IP address. So therefore, we see many more IPs. About 25% of those are behind NAT. So this is just a rough estimate since for those 25%, we cannot um, give good numbers since we cannot easily differentiate whether there's just one peer or hundreds of peers behind one, um, yeah, behind one NAT gateway. And so these numbers are just in some kind of upper bound because they are, the, uh, they are also legitimate peers within the whole network. Um, on average, with the help of the civil attack, we see that between five and 6,000 6, bots publi publish storm-related content. So these are part of the control infrastructure. They publish hashes, which then other peers can search for. Um, those are then also typically the, um, yeah, the DNS servers or the web servers where you can also download the content. And we see about 30,000 peers per day searching for the content. So um, this is then basically a lower bound, since probably we do not see all searches, but at least we see 30,000 peers um, being infected each day and searching for storm-related things. Um, then something that was also hyped in the media was the encryption, which was uh, added in October this year. Um, where each protocol message is then encoded or encoded um, with an XOR key. So just you take a message, XOR it with this 40-byte key, and then you get the other, um, yeah, the encoded message, and then you just send it out. So they did not change the core protocol, but they just um, yeah, XOR each message with a specific key, which was pretty 
easy to reverse engineer. I think it just took us a couple of days, couple of hours or so, just to get this, um, yeah, this 40 byte key. And up to now, we've seen in the wild only just this one key being used. So they could use this to split the network in different regions or different zones. But up to now, it was just uh, this one key used in the wild. Um, in a one-week period in October, we've seen about, uh, so on average, about 6,000 hosts online within the storm net, so within the encrypted part of the peer-to-peer -peer network. And in total, we've seen 33,000 different IDs on about 300,000 unique IP addresses. So, um, and those are all infected machines since there is no legitimate client which speaks um, this encrypted version of the Overnet protocol. So this then shows, okay, there are several IPs um, being compromised, who are infected, who are running Storm, but it's not as bad, so we do not have millions of clients being infected within Storm. Okay, so we have now a way to basically get a good overview of who is online, who is infected, and now the next step would be, okay, how can we do mitigation? Can we also start, somehow stop this peer-to-peer -peer based network? Um, the first attack that's quite popular within the peer-to-peer -peer security community is eclipsing content, where the idea is that um, if, since the client just searches for a specific key, we could just um, overwrite this yeah, or the, um, this hash, if we just publish something on the same hash, we, we basically introduce a collision, and then since, um, yeah, within the eclipsing, we would then be basically um, in the middle of the routing process, and then we could inject something where the, um, yeah, some, we could basically inject something, sorry, shit. Um, Probably I'll start again. So with the civil attack, we are able to position ourselves um, across the whole network in such a way that we are near the, um, near the search request for everyone. So everyone is relaying his content over our computer. And therefore, we could also inject something uh, which is not the real executable, but which points to something else. Um, this is unfortunately not possible within Overnet since the, um, the whole room is too sparse. So we cannot get hold of all the requests. So for the technical details, I'll refer to the paper. Um, and polluting content, this is something that actually works, where basically the idea is since um, the infected nodes, they search for a specific key, we can just publish something um, on this specific ID and then overwrite. So we can introduce collisions so that if, uh, if another party searches for this uh, content, it receives legitimate answers from Storm, and it also search, uh, and it also receives the bogus answers that we inject here. So we can introduce collisions, and this actually works. Or oh, it seems to work at least. Um, the basic algorithm used here is that we at first crawl the network. Um, we announce then on all the uh, on all the keys that we know that are used by Storm. We announce all our bogus things, and uh, we also do a I do a broader um, overwriting. So if they have at least four bits in common, we basically uh, just send them a bogus request that basically points to ourselves. And then, for example, within five seconds, we can publish bogus content on about 400 peers. And in subsequent requests, those peers then return um, our content and not the real storm content. Um, and then if a, if a new infected machine then searches for this content, then it also finds our fake uh, hash values, and there, there, therefore we have then some kind of collision, and they do not get the real uh, controller where they should then connect to. Um, this seems to work. We did not, we just tried this for a couple of hours, um, and unfortunately, once we stop our overwriting, so once we stop the polluting, within about 30 minutes or so, the whole network recovers, since they are um, publishing quite aggressively, Therefore, it's pretty hard to do this in reality, but at least in theory it works. Problem with all the academics. So in theory it works, but in practice we still have some problems. Okay, some other aspects of Storm. Um, one interesting thing is the auto DDoS. Um, basically, if you query the, the whole network too often, so if you download the executable too often from the web server, they'll start to DDoS you. 
So this is not not that nice.